Hello everybody. In this video, we are going to discuss about dark reaction. So, in the previous video, you have come across what is photosynthesis, the significance of photosynthesis and the biochemical reactions of photosynthesis. So, when we were talking about photosynthesis, we said the reaction occurs in grana, that is inside the chloroplast in the photosystem PS1 and the other one is 2. Okay. So, when we were talking about, we were saying that in light reaction and dark reaction occurs in the chloroplast. Now, we have discussed in detail about light reaction, okay. So, that is phosphorylation which is occurring which is cyclic and non-cyclic. So, this occurs during the daytime, okay. So, the next one, the following reaction is the dark reaction. Okay, dark reaction occurs in the night time. Here, they may not need the light, but they definitely need the temperature. Okay, so this reaction was discovered or you can say that the entire biochemical reaction of dark reaction was given by Melvin Kelvin. Okay, so they were awarded Nobel Prize in the year 1961 for their work on dark reaction. Now, this dark reaction requires temperature, they occur in the stroma of chloroplast, but they occur in four steps only. What are the four steps? The first one is carboxylation. Carboxylation means carbon is being added on. So the fixation of carbon dioxide is known as carboxylation. The second step is reduction. The reduction of phosphoglyceraldehyde into diphosphoglyceric acid, okay. So, glyceraldehyde is being converted into diphospho, that is. So, the second step is reduction. So, what is happening is phosphoglyceric acid is getting reduced to form diphosphoglyceric acid. So, there is addition of phosphate. So, we say di means Two in number. So, there is addition of two phos phosphate, inorganic phosphate into phosphoglyceric acid, okay. So, that becomes the second step. The third step is synthesis of glucose. So, glucose is the medium that is the photosynthetic product is glucose. So, there is the synthesis of glucose occurring in dark reaction. When we spoke about light reaction, it was merely the electron which is being transported the production of ATPs, production of NADH2 molecules which were the reserve of energy, energy reserves. Those reserves are utilized in this dark reaction to produce glucose. So, glucose is a photosynthetic product and that is seen or produced in dark reaction whereas the light reaction were mere carriers of electrons and producers of energy. The last one is regeneration of RUDP, rubellose diphosphate. So, regeneration. So, what happens is actually carbon dioxide fixation occurs with rubellose diphosphate, okay. So, this will allow in further reactions and at the end of the dark reaction, we get back the rubellose diphosphate. That is the regeneration of rubellose diphosphate. Let us know in detail about the dark reaction. Now, to begin with the dark reaction, it is the rubellose monophosphate which takes up an inorganic phosphate, that is inorganic phosphate from ATP molecule. The adenosine triphosphate releases out of inorganic phosphate molecule and converts itself into adenose diphosphate. This phosphate will combine with the rubellose monophosphate to form rubellose diphosphate. These both are five carbon compound, okay. They consist of a chain which has five carbon, okay. Now, this rubellose diphosphate helps in carboxylation of carbon dioxide. So, the first steps occur here. 
So what happens? Six molecules of carbon dioxide is taken in com is combined with rubellose diphosphate, which is a six molecule, to give you twelve molecules of phosphoglyceric acid. This phosphoglyceric acid consists of three carbon compounds. Okay, so there is the conversion of ATP molecule into ADP molecule. So how many? 12 ATP molecules is converted into 12 molecules of adenosine diphosphate. So there is 12 molecules or 12 atoms of phosphate given out. Okay, 12, 12 inorganic phosphate is given out. With the help of phosphoglycerate kinase enzyme, these are converted into 12 diphosphoglyceric acid. So this diphosphoglyceric acid consists of three carbon compound. Okay, now this diphosphoglyceric acid will be converted into phosphoglyceraldehyde. So how is it getting converted? With an help of an enzyme that is glyceraldehyde phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme. What is occurring? There is the utilization of energy that is 12 molecules of NADPH2 is getting reduced into 12 molecules of NADP that is there is release of 12 inorganic phosphate okay so here the phosphate molecule is being released here okay this is coming out and you will find sorry this will release out here okay so that is about the release of phosphate molecules and energy is being utilized by 12 NADH2 molecule which is getting converted into 12 NADP molecule. Now when the 12 phosphoglyceraldehyde is being formed they show an isomerism that is that is 12 uh, that is PGAL that is phosphoglyceraldehyde and DHAP dihydroxyacetone phosphate which is being formed both the three carbon compounds okay they show isomerism okay they are isomeric in condition so what happens there is 10 molecules of phosphoglyceraldehyde coming out here one molecule of phosphoglyceraldehyde and one molecule of dihydroxyacetone phosphate wherein there is 10 plus 1 plus 1. So there is 12 molecules present here. Okay. So this isomerism, isomeric compound will combine itself. Okay. Once they combine, they will form fructose diphosphate molecule. So this fructose diphosphate molecule is 6 carbon compound. How is it? 3 from PGAL and 3 from DHAP is combined to form 6 molecules, 6 carbon compound molecule that is fructose diphosphate. Now this diphosphate will be removed off. How? The ADP molecule will combine one inorganic phosphate that is ATP they will get converted into ATP molecule and there is fructose monophosphate being produced. This fructose monophosphate will isomeric I mean will convert itself into glucose monophosphate with the help of an enzyme okay. So this glucose monophosphate will release out in phosphate molecule mono means one single phosphate. So they release out a single phosphate and there is formation of ATP molecule and there is glucose which is being formed. So glucose is again a 6 carbon compound. So this is the photosynthetic product of the light and dark reaction that is in a plant when we say photosynthesis occurs they are occurring that is light and dark reaction occurs together and the light reaction gives the energy to the dark reaction. The dark reaction utilizes the energy along with the temperature they carry out the reaction and they release out glucose which is the 
photosynthetic product. So the dark reaction which we spoke about can be also called as Kelvin cycle or C3 pathway. Okay, C3 pathway because the first compound is having only three carbon atom, okay, three carbon compound, okay. Now, the next one we enter into C4 cycle or Hatch and Sackle cycle or even it is known as alternate pathway of carbon dioxide fixation. So, when we talk about Kelvin cycle, okay, the dark reaction, that is nearly 97 percent of the plants carry out that particular process for fixation of carbon dioxide. Whereas there are some exceptions that is only 3 percent of the plants carry out this C4 cycle. C4 cycle has its own speciality. What is its speciality? It is a cycle which occurs in Kranz anatomy, okay. Kranz anatomy here simply means that there is dimorphic chloroplast, okay. We can say the chloroplast in this particular plant shows two types, okay. They can be one is the bundle sheets chloroplast and the other one is mesophyll cells chloroplast. Now, what is the speciality? When we say about chloroplast, you are, much, you are familiar with the ultra structure which we have done in the other uh, class, okay, other video wherein we saw that all the chloroplast consist of double membrane layer and they have the special coin like stack that is called the grana and they have thylakoids. Each coin or each segment or unit can be called as thylakoid and all these thylakoid put together is called as grana, okay. They are having the Fretz channel that is the grana is interconnected, okay, the information can be passed from one another, okay. And then they have the stroma that is the jelly matrix which is present. They consist of DNA, RNA, protein synthesis, uh, ribosomes and also proteins and few enzymes for their biochemical reactions, yes. But in this case, in the bundle sheet cells, you can say that the grana is absent, okay. There is no thylo the grana that is the thylakoid stack is absent, okay. So that is the one feature which is seen here. But whereas the mesophyll cells, they are as usual, you can find them to consist of the chloroplast, okay. And also they are present with intercellular spaces. So the bundle sheet cells and the mesophyll cells, both are interconnected for this particular cycle, that is C4 cycle, wherein carbon dioxide is being fixed. Now, how is it done? The first thing is the phosphoenol pyruvic acid will take up carbon dioxide with the help of phosphoenol pyruvate carboxylase enzyme, they will be converted into oxaloacetic acid, okay. So oxaloacetic acid is the first stable three, com three carbon compound molecule in the C4 cycle, okay. So oxaloacetic cycle also they are being called because of the stable, first stable molecule that is the oxaloacetic acid being produced. So this occurs in the mesophyll cells. So what happens, this oxaloacetic acid is converted into malic acid with the help of an enzyme that is malic dehydrogenase enzyme, wherein they are utilizing energy from NADPH2 molecule into NADP molecule, okay. Once they utilize the energy, they will be formation of malic acid. So can you see the variation? So three carbon compound is being converted into four carbon compound, okay. So this malic acid will enter into bundle sheet cell wherein the malic enzyme will act upon it and there will be the carbon dioxide which has been taken up and they enter into Kelvin cycle where in the bundle sheet cell. Okay, so the Kelvin cycle is the dark reaction which we just spoke about few minutes earlier wherein there is releasal of 
carb glucose molecule okay so there is glucose molecule which is found which is formed or produced so that the energy is gone okay so carbon dioxide is fixed in the bundle sheet cell and then the end the there is the production of the pyruvic acid and this pyruvic acid will enter back into mesophyll cell so pyruvic acid is three carbon compound which is again utilizing the energy that is atp molecule one particular inorganic one inorganic phosphate is added on and there is conversion of atp adenosine triphosphate into adenosine diphosphate and they form into phosphoenol pyruvic acid so this goes on as a cyclic manner so same way in the dark reaction also when we said there is 10 pagl is being formed those pagl will convert or get into the cycle to form rubellose monophosphate okay so that is also a cyclic manner it goes on in cycle so whatever starts off that is phosphoenol uh, pyruvic acid which is the starting molecule will end will end end back into pyruvic acid which gets converted and get back to phosphoenolic pyruvic acid there mono rubellose mo, monophosphate is the starting point and 10 pagl will convert itself to give back six molecules of mo, rubellose monophosphate so you can see there is a complete cycle occurring okay so that's the reason we call it as c4 cycle here and c3 cycle there they can be called as kelvin cycle also and here it is also called as alternate pathway of carbon dioxide fixation wherein only 3% of plant will take up this particular mechanism of fixing carbon dioxide why because there is a change in the bundle sheet cells what happens the chloroplast doesn't have the grana in them that's the reason they are entering into a special type of fixation of carbon dioxide they are known as kranz anatomy okay so the next one is photorespiration photorespiration is also known as c2 cycle photorespiration is a phenomenon wherein light is required okay and they are involving three cell organelles that is chloroplast peroxisomes and mitochondria so what happens is when there is concentration of carbon dioxide is very low they combine with oxygen which is combining rubellose diphosphate combines with oxygen to produce three mole two molecules that is three molecules of phosphoglyceric acid and two molecules of phosphoglyceric acid so this occurs in the chloroplast okay so where in what happens is these two are combined phospho phosphatase phosphatase means removal of phosphate group okay phosphatase will remove the phosphate group and there is production of glycolic acid this glycolic acid which is produced in the chloroplast will enter into peroxisome okay so once they enter glycolic acid there is the consumption of oxygen so this occurs when there is concentration of carbon dioxide is low so they are utilizing the oxygen so the oxygen is utilized and there is conversion of glycolic acid into glyoxylic acid this glyoxylic acid is converted into glycine so this glycine is been entering into mitochondria so this conversion is helped by an enzyme known as glyoxylate transaminase so this particular enzyme will help in formation of glycine so this glycine once it enters into mitochondria they going to convert into serine okay so once they are being converted there is the production of ammonia and carbon dioxide okay so this carbon dioxide is important wherein it and it is uh, further reacting in chloroplast now this glycine will enter back into peroxisomes and wherein they are converted into hydroxypyruvic acid 
So hydroxic pyruvic acid is converted into glyceric acid. How is it converting? With the help of energy, that is NADH molecules is converted into NAD, okay? And with the help of enzyme, they will be converted into glyceric acid. This glyceric acid will enter into chloroplast along with the carbon dioxide. They will form into 3 PGA and then they will enter into the C3 cycle, okay? So once there is C3 cycle occurring, there is the production of rubellose diphosphate. As I said earlier, these cycles will end back, okay? They are continuing. Whatever is the starting point, the end product will convert itself to give the starting molecule. So, the C3, C3 cycle will release out rubellose diphosphate. Again, the concentration variation will result in consuming of oxygen rather than carbon dioxide and this cycle continues, okay? So, they are called as C2 cycle wherein there is continuation of this particular mechanism, okay? So, when uh, this is another pathway of fixation of carbon dioxide even though when there is less concentration of them, okay? So, that is about photorespiration. So, in this particular video, we have come across three cycles, all the three cycles, C3, C4 and C2 cycle. C3 cycle is also called as Calvin cycle, which is the dark reaction, wherein we said rubellose monophosphate, they occur in four steps, okay, carboxylation of carbon dioxide, reduction and uh, reduction and phosphorylation and also regeneration of rubellose monophosphate. That is the first reaction, the, the, I mean first cycle, C3 cycle. Then you came across C4 cycle. C4 cycle occurs wherein there is least molecule, least plant, that is there is Kranz anatomy occurring. When there is Kranz anatomy, the plants will enter into C3, C4 cycle. That is 3 percent of the plant, whereas 97 uh, percentage of plants, green plants will enter into C3 cycle. So, here there is variation because of bundle sheet cells. The bundle sheet cells will not have grana and that is another way of fixation of carbon dioxide. And the last that is C3, C2 cycle wherein 3 cell organelles are involved, that is the chloroplast, mitochondria and peroxisomes are involved and here you can see that they require light and the other thing is there is low concentration of carbon dioxide so they utilize the oxygen molecule and they start up with their biochemical reactions, okay. With this we complete the entire photosynthesis mechanisms, how the plant carry out photosynthesis. We were in the lower classes, you were talking only about the plants using raw material. But now chemically, uh, chemical formulas and the reactions will help you to study better. So the entire photosynthesis reactions are given in few cycles, that is the light reaction, dark reaction, C4, C3, C2 cycles and with this we complete with photosynthesis. The next unit we will, uh, the next chapter we will be starting off with photorespiration, okay, that we will do in the next video. Photorespiration, glycolysis, Krebs cycle, electron transport chain and the last thing is the, utili uh, the uses of photorespiration and I mean uh, respiration and anaerobic respiration and uses of anaerobic respiration. Okay, let me give you a small introduction about photorespiration. Okay, so photorespiration, photo means light and respiration. Now, when you talk about photosynthesis, it is the production of food. Now, we would like to know what is respiration. Now, all the plants are living, for, uh, for example, let us not take about the general living organism. 
all the living cells, living organisms are carrying out their life processes, okay. Life processes are those activities which will help us to identify, yes, this particular organism is living. So, which are the life processes? The life processes are the breathing mechanism, respiration, diet, nutrition, nutrition means intake, digestion, taking of energy, everything and then you have the growth, development, okay, so, and reproduction, these are life processes. So, photorespiration, I mean photosynthesis occurs in plants only. Those plants which consist of chlorophyll, that is green plants only takes up photosynthesis. Yeah, the red uh, alga and all, they carry out photosynthesis but their pigmentation mechanism will vary a bit different from that of the green plants. Yeah, now talking about respiration, respiration also occurs in the plant. Okay, so is it plants taking in oxygen and giving out carbon dioxide as what we humans do? No, they take in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen, that is the first thing. Second thing is during night the plants also give out carbon dioxide but in very minute quantity. I feel like you have come across few elders saying that don't go near the trees in the night okay so they say something mythological way or maybe that is few can be said as um, as some uh, myth that is which cannot be which cannot come true okay but they are incidents when people walk through the forest or walk under the trees in the night time they f they faint that is just because carbon dioxide concentration is high in the night time under the trees okay the leaves are giving out carbon dioxide and if our lungs does not get the required amount of oxygen yes we faint okay that is the reason now photosyn i mean respiration occurs by taking in of carbon dioxide and giving out of uh, oxygen in case of plant now we can say that the potential energy is converted into kinetic energy so what is the potential energy? The energy which is stored, they are sedentary, they don't move, okay. So they don't, uh, they are not in movement, they are not being utilized, okay. That is called potential energy. So the energy which is there is converted into kinetic energy during respiration. Potential energy is the energy got during photosynthesis and this potential energy is converted into kinetic energy during respiration. This conversion is, that is the glucose molecule can be converted or is converted into ATP molecule. The ATP molecule is the energy currency. This occurs during respiration. Now, respiration can be said as exothermic catabolic reaction. What is catabolic? We said photosynthesis is an anabolic reaction. Anabolic means addition. The small, small molecule will be brought together to make a complex molecule. As we know, in the photosynthesis, carbon dioxide, water, okay, and with the help of sunlight and chlorophyll, this carbon dioxide and water is brought together to make glucose molecule. So you can say small small unit is combined to make a macro unit which is utilized that occurs in photosynthesis. Whereas in the case of respiration we say it as catabolic reaction. It is breaking down of molecule. Now when you say breaking down of molecule the glucose molecule which has been produced during photosynthesis will be taken up in the case of respiration this glucose molecule will be broken down and breaking down of this molecule will release energy. So that's the reason we say it as catabolic reaction. Again comparison with photosynthesis we say it is an endothermic reaction that is they absorb heat. Heat has been absorbed by the, by the end of the uh, photosynthesis to produce glucose and in the case of respiration, we say it as exothermic reaction. That is, it releases out the energy. 
it is releases out the heat from the plant now why are we saying it is an exothermic so again get back to the example that is glucose molecule will be broken down into the smaller molecules wherein oxygen is released out ATP molecules is produced okay so when this production occurs there is always breaking of the bond okay so glucose consists of covalent bond okay so this covalent bond when it is broken down there is release of eight and that is sort of the reason we say it as exothermic they are exothermic in react uh, that is in in the reaction they are exothermic the release of heat energy now since respiration is a process of a catabolic exothermic reaction conversion of potential energy into kinetic energy which is utilized by the plant we should be knowing what are the different types of respiration so respiration occurs in the cellular level so you can say it as cellular respiration occurs so this cellular level respiration is of two types one is aerobic respiration the other one is anaerobic respiration in the case of aerobic respiration glucose is the molecule it occurs in the mitochondria in the cells okay so in the cells they occur that's the reason we call it as cellular respiration in mitochondria glucose molecule will be broken down okay so they will be broken down and there is release of energy that energy will be stored in mitochondria that's the reason we say it as mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell now this energy that is glucose will be broken down into pyruvic okay pyruvic two molecules one molecule of glucose will be broken down into two molecules of pyruvic acid okay so there is release of energy so that energy is utilized by the plant for its growth mechanism all the formation of enzymes protein etc will be used okay so that is called as aerobic respiration in the case of sorry in the case of aerobic respiration this particular phenomenon occurs in presence of oxygen oxygen is required for respiration whenever the organism is respiring in the presence of oxygen we call them as aerobes aerobes is the organisms which require oxygen for their respiration human beings is an aerobic organism okay so they occurs in cell level then we have another type of respiration that is anaerobic respiration anaerobic that is in absence of oxygen okay so in the case of anaerobic respiration there is no there is not requirement of oxygen oxygen is not required there they can respire without oxygen the other thing is in case they are called as anaerobes okay in case these anaerobes are supplemented or supplied oxygen to them they cause the death of that particular organisms okay so that we call it as anaerobes or or anaerobic respiration is a phenomenon wherein the respiration occurs in absence of oxygen so aerobic respiration and aerobic respiration are two different types of respiration in the case of aerobic respiration they occur in few steps okay four important steps one is glycolysis then phosphorylation then there is krebs cycle and the last one is terminal oxidation chain that is the um, electron which has been transported so these are the four important phenomenon or four important mechanisms which you'll be studying under aerobic respiration then moving on to anaerobic respiration you have only two types of anaerobic respiration one is fermentation the other one is lactic acid production so in the case of anaerobic uh, respiration that is yeast is been used for the fermentation process that is the wheat 
barley or etc whatever organic matter they can be converted into alcohol okay so they are converted into alcohol in the presence of this anaerobes okay so that alcohol production industry brewery industry is using this particular phenomenon for the production of alcohol the other one is lactic acid production which i spoke about lactic acid production is about the produce producing of lactic acid this occurs in human beings even though i'm saying it's anaerobic it doesn't require oxygen it is a process a phenomenon which occurs in absence of oxygen it is called as anaerobic respiration then you're saying it is about human beings yes in case we humans sit in a particular position for a longer duration of time that is you fold your fold your legs and sit flat on the floor or on your chair for a longer duration of time when you get up suddenly after quite a long of time quite a lot of time you get cramps okay that cramps is due to the production of lactic acid so in the case of glycolysis in the presence of oxygen this glucose molecule will be broken down into pyruvic acid but whereas in the lactic acid there is absence of oxygen why when you sit up in a position when you're folding your legs there is cutting of supply of oxygen into your legs okay that is the blood flow is limited when the blood flow is limited oxygen supply is limited and that's the reason your cells will not take up the proper glycolysis but they take up lactic acid fermentation or lactic acid production and that particular acids will give you that cramp sense okay so these particular five to six reaction we will be studying in the later on in the next video okay so this is about a brief introduction about respiration in plants thank you